This isn't the uh This is interstitial fluid, this is extracellular fluid, so this is interstitial fluid, this is interstitial fluid, so this is a blood vessel, plasma. So this is interstitial and uh, this interstitial fluid and uh, plasma is extracellular fluid. This one is intracellular fluid. So transcellular fluid is a special type of extracellular fluid. So account is 1% to 3% of body weight. Uh, Transseral fluids are cerebrospinal fluid, aqueous and vitreous humor in the eye, secretions of the digestive tract in the associated organs like saliva, bile, pancreatic juice, renal tubular fluid and bladder memory, synovial fluid and sweat. These all are transseral fluid, special type of extraseral fluid. So uh, now extraseral fluid compartment, it contains an optimum amount of nutrients, gases, Hormones, enzymes, water, electrolytes needed by cells to maintain life. This is uh, extracellular fluid. So extracellular fluid is constant motion throughout the body. It is in constant motion. It is uniform throughout our body. So all cells live in essentially the same environment. So cells are buzzed with extracellular fluid. Cells are capable of living, performing their special functions as long as proper function of extracellular fluid. So uh, this is intracellular fluid. Uh, extracellular fluid. Intracellular fluid contains water, nutrient, gases, and hormones, and also water, nutrient, gases, hormones, enzymes also found on the extracellular fluid. But by the way, in between intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, there is differences in amount in electrolytes, but there is no difference in solutes. So there is similar oncotic pressure, and but there is electrolyte difference. So potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, and protein are um, found in more content or in more amount in intracellular fluid, whereas sodium, chlorine, calcium, and bicarbonate is found in intracellular, uh, extracellular fluid in more amount. So, special mechanisms for transporting ions through cell membranes maintain the ion concentration differences between the extracellular and intracellular fluids. So, Normal values of extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. Uh, for instance, extracellular fluid, uh, for instance, sodium is 142 and 10 is intracellular fluid, so sodium is, mo uh, is more in amount in extracellular. So uh, potassium is 4 in extracellular, 140 in intracellular, so it is much amount in intracellular. Calcium is 2.4 in extra, 0 0.001 is in intra, so it's much more in extracellular fluid. So magnesium is 1.2 intra in extra and 58 in intra and chlorine is 103 in extra and 4 in intra so it's much amount in, in extracellular fluid so bicarbonate is 28 in extra and 10 is in intra phosphate is 4 in extra and uh, 75 in intra uh, and this is SO4 is 1 in uh, extra and 2 in intra. Uh, glucose is 90 in extra and uh, 0 to 20 in intra. Amino acid is 30 in extracellular and uh, 200 in intracellular. So cholesterol, like phospholipid is neutral from 0 0.5 in extra to 295 in, in intra. So PO2 is uh, 35 in extra 20 in intra and uh, pco2 is 46 in extra and 20 in intra pco2 uh, and also ph is 77.4 in extra 7 in intra so protein also 2 in extra and 16 in intra so this is uh, about the normal value of extra and intracellular fluids so uh, extracellular and intracellular differ in terms of their electrolyte composition Differ. That means there is difference in electrolyte between intra and extra, but fluid compartments of solute concentration, solute concentration or similarity are normally equal. That means no anosmotic difference between intra, serial fluid and extra, serial fluid. So the next uh, section is uh, hemostasis. Hemostasis is the maintenance of nearly constant conditions.
in the internal environment but this does not mean that it is compositional absolutely unchanging both external and internal factors continuously to written and distribute homeostasis so hemostasis is a maintenance of balance keeping a constant internal and in internal environment in an organism with narrow tolerance range so uh, homeostasis is keeping balance uh, so when we see uh, changes the homeostasis is affected by external change and internal change so uh, for instance internal change results in loss of homeostasis like uh, internal change like uh, abnormalities in the visceral organs for instance if there is uh, one organ is affected or diseased so the balance may affect it because that organ maybe we produce something in excess or produce in uh, less in less amount so this uh, will change the homeostasis and also external factors like heat cold oxygen deficiency pathogen and toxins microorganisms these are also may affect uh, our body externally so these all are uh, organism after affection or an organism attempts or tries to compensate it if it is uh, low amount it, will, it tries to increase it if it's high amount try to decrease it but, uh, but if this uh, compensation succeeds fulfills uh, wellness that means healthy condition will regain but if this compensation fails an illness or disease will occur so even after illness and disease if this uh, uh, imbalance continues maybe will continue into days into this uh, so this is unstructured when uh, any factor starts to move the internal environment away from optimal conditions the body system initiate appropriate counter reaction to minimize that change to minimize that change for instance during exposure to cold environment our body will shiver that means during shivering our muscle will move so the muscle will produce heat because muscles since muscles are producing heat shivering will produce heat so heating in our body will uh, increase so we'll compensate it during warm environment our body will sweat that means during our body became fever or warm uh, to decrease it is uh, body temperature our body is uh, decreases heat by sweating so sweating is will compensate it uh, an organism said to be in homeostasis when it's an internal environment contains an optimum amount of uh, nutrients gases electrolytes water hormones enzymes and temperature so uh, independent relationship of interdependent relationship of cells body systems and hemostasis so this is hemostasis this is body system and this is cells so um, hemostasis is essential for survival of cells so cells if uh, hemostasis is important for survival of cells if cells are normal or survive it uh, our body system will be uh, will be uh, nice will be well so uh, hemostasis Importantly, all organs of the body perform their functions to maintain constant conditions in extracellular fluid. So, to make balance, to make homeostasis in extracellular fluid, all uh, 11 systems, all systems of in our body work, should work in harmony, should work in normal condition. So, if you, we start, uh, if you are starting in respiratory system, respiratory system is important because uh, blood picks up oxygen in the alveoli, in the lung, and are curing the oxygen needed by cells. So, uh, oxygen in the lung will be given into cells by blood. So, uh, entering oxygen and removing carbon dioxide in the lung is uh, it's a function of respiratory system. So, carbon dioxide is released from the blood into the lung alveoli for exhalation. So respiratory system maintains the normal concentration of respiratory gases in the blood. Gases in the blood means means respiratory system enables our body to gain oxygen and uh, it make uh, the concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, will be normal. Will be normal. So the second type is the cardiovascular system. So the cardiovascular system is a very important system. So cardiovascular system provides nutrients like glucose, amino acid, lipids, gases, oxygen, signaling molecules, and uh, uh, these are provides this one and also removes waste products like urea, keratin, and carbon dioxide. 
urea and keratin so urine so carbon dioxide is very important i mean cardiovascular system is very important in providing nutrients gases and molecules so uh, gastrointestinal system different dissolved nutrients are absorbed from ingested food into the extracellular food of the blood some waste products of metabolism are eliminated in the feces eliminated uh, renal system is also a passage of blood through kidneys remove substances that are not needed by cells from plasma and kidney are maintained constant ionic concentration so uh, this means for let me uh, give you a uh, gastrointestinal system uh, is important in uh, keeping the equilibrium or I mean, uh, balance in uh, new uh, in ingesting an uh, ingestion of food in absorption digestion absorption of nutrients so it's a very important vital system renal system also important for excreting uh, unwanted or waste products and uh, in uh, filtrating um, important nutrients and also maintaining uh, balance so the other is musculoskeletal system. This is provides mobility for protection against adverse surroundings, allow movement to obtain the food is required for nutrition, hemostasis and internal storage, Hemo hemopoiesis and mineral storage is function of the system. So the other is the immune system is important for protection of body from pathogens. Integumentary system is provide a boundary between body's internal environment and outside the world, outside world. A cover cushion protect deeper tissues in regards of the body, temperature regulation and excretion of wastes. So integumentary system is important for temperature regulation, excretion of wastes, and to protect uh, our body from microorganisms. And since uh, if integumentary system is removed, our body will be fluid. So if any organism is attached to our body, it will be infected. So it's a very important organ uh, system. So reproductive system is uh, also, even if it's less uh, in role of hemostasis, it is important in keeping hemostasis by generating new beings to take a place of those that are dying. So uh, this is also important uh, to, uh, to, to increase I mean to just continue our uh, generation or human being. So the other important, uh, very important uh, systems are nervous system and endocrine system. So regulatory systems of hemostasis, two controlling bodies of hemostasis are nervous system and endocrine system. This is how nervous system works. So this is a uh, cell belly and uh, this is axon and uh, this is nerve impulse. This is nerve impulse. So nerve impulse is going to this, so neurotransmitters release into receptor or effector cell. And this is endocrine system, and uh, this is uh, the released one is hormone, this one is nerve impulse. So this is a uh, receptor organ, and this is a uh, gland, so it will be go just like this. So the two systems are very important. Both systems are important for controlling human body organs. Or system so uh, this system but there is difference in the nervous system uh, it uses nerve impulse but in the system it is ke uses chemical messenger called hormone uh, in nervous system it's automatic it will give fast response because of nerve impulse but in the system it's slow process slow process it is secreted in glands and will move into bloodstream uh, so this uh, a nervous regulation mechanism nervous system is composed of three major components sensory portion integrative portion motor portion so sensory receptor detects any change in the body like uh, uh, blood body temperature arterial blood pressure blood glucose and pain to see and send impulse to see so sensory means it's afferent so collects information from our body and sends to the central nervous system and also integrative portion is uh, it is integrative or association portion is CNS in CNS, it's associates the formation, store some generate thought. So we'll interpret, we'll understand uh, the thought which is go there. So the other is motor portion, this is a response. So send appropriate response to effector organs. Effector organs are muscle and gland. So, so uh, see if it is, this is break, so sensory information goes here. So interpret here in integrative portion or association neuron. So motor response are going to just like this. 
So this is motor and this is uh, this is uh, sensor. This is motor. This is integrative neuro. So these three types of uh, neurons. So the other is hormonal regulation. This is endocrine. Hormones are chemical messengers that are secreted by endocrine glands, transported in the blood to the target organs. So there is five types of endocrine glands, pure endocrine glands, like uh, pituitary gland, uh, pineal gland, adren uh, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, and adrenal gland. But the other, uh, there, there are other glands which is mixed, like endocrine, like hypothalamus, pancreas, thymus, like this. And uh, an example for this hormonal control is parathyroid hormone is uh, act on the kidney, bone, and intestine. So in this area, it is important to increase calcium. My own. So uh, if it is decreased, it's important to increase the calcium level in the blood. And aldosterone and uh, aldosterone is uh, act on the kidney, and important to increase sodium, sodium level. So this is a hormonal control hormonal regulatory system the other types of control is uh, the one is feed forward control and the other is uh, feedback control feedback control having two types of feedback control negative feedback and uh, negative feedback and uh, positive feedback so feed forward control is uh, a term used f a term feed forward is used for responses made in anticipation of change this is established before the change is developed so correction is by anticipation that means feed forward control means before one action our body will secrete some things or will ready to be ready before that action so this is b that means feed forward so for instance before actual exercise or running uh, our heart rate and respiratory try to increase and before food enter to GIT our digestive juice will be increased in the secretion of digestive juice will be increased so uh, while meal is still in the GIT, uh, before digestion, uh, the amount of insulin increases. So this is known as feed forward control. That means before uh, something happens, uh, medium to before something happens, uh, something anticipation will occur. Uh, so uh, feed forward control is used to adapt and rapid, rapid rate of response to the change, to the change. But in the case of feedback control, Feedback control refers to responses made after change has been detected. So feedback means feedback means uh, it's taking uh, after something is takes place or occurred. So it refers to response made after change has been detected. So established after the change is developed. So it alters the functions of organs by increasing or decreasing their activities. It alters the function of organs by increasing or decreasing activity so there are two types of feedback mechanism negative and positive feedback mechanism so uh, the negative feedback mechanism works by producing an effect which opposes the previous condition initiating stimulus of initiating stimulus or by opposing the previous condition of an organ that means uh, negative feedback mechanism is opposes the previous action meaning if something increases it will uh, it will decrease it will decreases it makes decrease uh, if something decreases it makes increases that means uh, if there is any deviation it works in opposition for that deviation that means uh, counter reaction for that if it increases it makes a decrease if it is decreases it makes increase so elements of the negative feedback mechanism since there is one sensor is one comparator and uh, effector so sensor measures the controlled variable, whereas comparator is a control center, so interprets input from sensors to determine when deviations from set of point have occurred. So comparator initiates a counter response. Infector means restore the set point to its normal level. Most hemostatic values of the body are controlled by negative feedback mechanism. For instance, negative feedback mechanism is common type of mechanism, so control of blood glucose level for instance if blood glucose level is below it will it will be increased and if it is above it will be decreased so this is by negative mechanism body temperature also by if it is low body temperature it will be increased but if it's high temperature it will be decreased so body temperature calcium level uh, blood pressure this all types are uh, controlled by negative feedback mechanism 
so uh, it's very important also it's very important because uh, in case of uh, this is our uh, very common in our body because it's comp it compensates any deviations so for instance let us examples for all these uh, examples so control of blood glucose level uh, for instance homostasis means if it is blood glucose level is between 70 and 110 mg per ml, per ml it is known as hemostasis but stimulus blood glucose level rises for instance after eating carbohydrate rich meal so if blood glucose level rises uh, beta cells of pancreas releases insulin into the blood that means since the blood glucose level increases the pancreas responds by uh, making beta cells uh, release insulin into the blood because so insulin is will really produced or going to the blood so in uh, body cells take up of more glucose liver takes up glucose and store it as glycogen that means insulin is very important to decrease glucose in the blood by making uh, by making into t by sending to tissues and by storing uh, in liver by uh, in, in the form of glycogen so now uh, blood glucose level declines because of these things so because of action of insulin by that time homostasis will raise so blood glucose level increases so decreases by insulin and also if it is blood glucose level decreases uh, for instance after skipping meal during starvation alpha cells of the pancreas release gl glucagon into the blood so glucagon will produce so glucagon will make liver breaks down glycogen uh, and release glucose into the blood so now by the way the main action of glycogen is increases glucose level in the blood so um, by making uh, which is by making uh, glucose as glyco stored glucose is stored in, uh, in the liver as glycogen so the function of glycogen is will break down the glycogen into glucose and uh, will increase glucose will release glucose and increases in the bloodstream so at this time gluco blood glucose level rises so hemostasis will regain so this is how blood glucose level will be hemostasized or will be balanced or maintained the second type is uh, hemostasis of the calcium so this is a uh, normal calcium level is 8.5 up to 11 milligram per deciliter this is homostatic but uh, uh, he hemostasis uh, but in the case of hemostasis disturbed for instance rising in calcium level in the blood thyroid gland produces calcitonin by that time calcitonin increased excretion of calcium in the kidney uh, and also calcium deposition in bone uh, or inhibition of osteoclasts will be raised so by this time blood calcium level decline decline so hemostasis will be restored hemostasis will be stopped that means in the case of uh, decreasing uh, calcium level in the blood, uh, calcitonin will be responsible. Cal uh, cal calcitonin will be responsible to decrease calcium in the blood and make homostasis. So the action of calcitonin is and one is by increasing excretion of calcium in the kidney to decrease to, to decrease it. The other is by uh, deposition of calcium in the bone. So the other is. Uh, uh, for, for instance, if homostasis is disturbed by falling, by decreasing the calcium level in the blood, for instance, there is uh, less amount of calcium in the blood. By that time, parathyroid hormone will detect and uh, will sense and secrete parathyroid hormone. So parathyroid hormone will increase blood calcium level in the body and the homostasis level will be maintained. So how parathyroid hormone uh, increase uh, calcium level? One is by releasing stored calcium from bone that means stimulation of osteoclasts more than osteoblasts the other is by enhancing reabsorption of calcium in the kidney and by stimulating calcitrol production of uh, calcitrol production at kidney enhanced calcium phosphorus and uh, phosphate and absorption by digestive tract so meaning our body 
this is a normal level of calcium in the blood, but uh, this uh, normal level of homeostasis is deserved. Our body balances calcium by using calcitonin hormone and uh, parathyroid hormone. This is an important part of regulation. The other is thermoregulation, human thermoregulation. So if our body temperature falls, blood vessels will, will be constricted so that heat is conserved. Sweet glands do not secrete fluid. So shivering uh, generates heat which warms our body. That means shivering is involuntary contraction of muscles. So muscle contraction is produce heat. So by this time, normal body temperature will be restored. So heat is retained. But if our body temperature rises, the body vessels will be dilated, resulting in heat loss to the environment. Sweet glands will secrete fluid, that means sweating, sweating also. So as the fluid evaporates, heat is lost from the body. So heat is lost to the environment, so normal body temperature will be restored. This is known as temperature regulation. So lastly, in negative feedback mechanism, arterial blood pressure. In this case, normal range of blood pressure is here. By this time, so uh, hemostasis, this is normal range of blood pressure. By this time, hemostasis is deserved, meaning blood pressure rises above normal range. By this time, baso rece baro receptors will be stimulated and reflex responses. Uh, by the way, these uh, dot uh, lines are inhibition. So by this case, cardio accelerator center will be inhibited. Cardio inhibitory, cardio inhi uh, cardio acceler acceleratory center inhibited and cardio inhibitory center stimulated and the vasomotor center inhibited. By this case, the decreased cardiac output and vasodilation occurs. And by these uh, two actions, blood pressure will be reduced. So hemostasis will be maintained or restored. But if blood pressure falls below normal range, uh, reflex response will be, will be uh, present and baro receptors will be inhibited. And by this case, vaso center, vaso motor centers stimulated, cardio inhibitory center inhibited, and cardio accelerator center stimulated. By these actions, vaso constriction will be occurring in the blood vessel and increased cardiac output. That means in the heart. So by this action, blood uh, pressure will be increased. Then normal blood pressure is maintained. So by this action and by this action, our uh, blood pressure, arterial blood pressure, will be hemos uh, in homeostasis or will be in constant. So uh, the other type of mechanism is positive feedback mechanism. It works by producing an effect which enhances or repeats the same action like that of starting stimulus. That means if there is one stimulus started, it will repeat it or it will enhance, it will increase. So the response of the system makes deviation more greater, more greater. So uh, positive feedback mechanism is not homostatic and are rarely in healthy individuals. That means because if, uh, uh, it, it will make more deviation because if it is uh, increases more than needed, will make division. So an example of positive feedback mechanism, blood clotting, labor during childbirth, generation of and propagation of action potential, and luteinizing hormone surge is uh, considered as an example of uh, human, an example of positive feedback mechanism. So when compare and contrast positive feedback and uh, negative feedback mechanism, negative feedback mechanism is uh, very common in healthy individuals and very important also very important also when we see the liver during childbirth for instance uh, head of fetus touches or pushes the cervix here when touches it nerve impulses from cervix transmitted to the brain and the brain will be stimulated then brain stimulates pituitary gland to secrete oxytocin that means oxytocin is secreted by posterior pituitary gland so posterior pituitary gland uh, secrete oxytocin and oxytocin carried in bloodstream to the uterus so oxytocin stimulates uterine, uterine muscles and the contraction will be made. Then by this time pushes fetus toward the cervix. So, so uh, the contraction is uh, first, there is less amount of contraction, but uh, every time the contraction will be increases by the positive feedback mechanism. Will be increases, increases, increases. So the maximum contraction, at maximum contraction and dilation, the, the fetus will be delivered.
So in this case, positive feedback mechanism is very important. Uh, the other is blood clotting is an example of very valuable use of positive feedback mechanism. For instance, uh, for instance, break or tear in the blood vessel wall. There is breakage here in the blood vessel. By this time, clotting occurs as platelets adhere to the site and release chemicals. So in this area, uh, the platelets will go there and uh, it will adhere there and it release chemicals. Then released chemical attract more platelets here. So more platelets will aggregate on this break area. After that, clothing proceeds until break is sealed by newly formed clothes. So uh, clothing is more formed and the blood visit is already closed. Already closed. By this time, the number of platelets and the number of clothing formation will increase from the original, from the starting stimulus. So in this case, until uh, blood uh, bleeding stops, until the breakage is heals, the clotting system will increase. So this is a positive feedback mechanism also. So generation and propagation of action potential, stimulated nerve fiber, opening of sodium channels, entry of sodium, stimulates the opening of more and more sodium channels. This is also considered as a positive feedback mechanism. Why do you think that most control systems of the body are operated by negative feedback mechanism rather than uh, operated? Uh, why do you think that most control systems of the body operate by negative feedback mechanism rather than positive feedback mechanism? What would occur if blood pressure is controlled by positive feedback mechanism? Because uh, if blood pressure is controlled by positive feedback mechanism, because uh, if uh, the blood pressure increment will be increased, 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 so it will be more than needed. Uh, it will be more than 140 by 90, so uh, hypertension or excess emergent hypertension will be raised and uh, the person will be died because of hypertension, because if it is positive feedback mechanism. So our body uh, systems are used mostly negative feedback mechanism because it is uh, compensatory, homostatic. It will be, if it is normal, it will stop. Either decreasing or decreasing, increasing, it will stop if it's normal. So negative feedback mechanism is very important. If the person is suddenly bleed to later of blood, so blood volume will be decreased, arterial blood pressure will be decreased, coronary blood vessels uh, flow diminishes. So by this case, heart will be weakened. Further dim diminished pumping ability of the heart, which leads to further decreasing blood pressure and coronary blood flow. So the cycle repeats itself again and again until this occurs. That means. Uh, decrement or if it is a positive feedback mechanism until uh, or days occurs it will be continuous it will be continuous so this is a blood pressure uh, this is a normal range of blood pressure that will be decreased 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 even more blood pressure decreases even more until days occurs now I will show you about homostatic values body fluid volume 42 liter intracellular mm -hmm. fluid is 28 liter Extracellular fluid is 40 liter, interstitial fluid is 10.5, and plasma fluid is 3.5 liter, osmolality is 300, and body temperature is between 36.5 and 37.5, and pH is between 7.35 and 7.45. This is a uh, normal values. Blood gases. This is partial carbon dioxide, is between 35 and 45 millimeter mercury. Partial oxygen is between 40 and 104 millimeter mercury. Electrolytes, extracellular fluid, calcium is 10 mg, meaning calcium is 10 mg at extracellular fluid, potassium is 4 at extracellular fluid, and sodium is 142. Chlorine is 103, and bicarbonate is 27 mEq per liter in extracellular fluid environment. And waste, in waste products, bilirubin is 0.5 meter in average. Keratin is found between 0.6 and 1.5. And uh, this is for male. The female is between 0.5 and 1.3. And blood urea nitrogen or BUN is between 8 and 25 milligram per deciliter. Uric acid is uh, different for women and men. For women is between 2.3 and 6.6. For men is between 3.6 and 8.5. Blood glucose level is uh, two group two parts having uh, fasting blood, fasting blood sugar and random blood sugar. For fasting blood sugar, it's between 70 and 130. Arterial blood pressure, 
system systolic blood pressure is 120 but the range is between 90 and 140 but the asteroid proportion is 80 it's between 60 and 90 pulse pressure is 40 mean blood pressure is 96 pulmonary arterial pressure is 25 by 10 cardiac output is 5 liter per minute blood flow is 5 liter per minute read blood series is for uh, up to 6 million this is for me the female is less it's from 4 uh, up to 5.5 wide blood cell count is uh, 4000 up to 11000 and uh, hemoglobin is between 12 and 18 in female, 14 20 in male. Uh, platelet is uh, also hemoglobin, uh, platelet is also between 150,000 and 450,000. So, this is all about the normal values of uh, uh, different type groups of laboratory results. So, this is uh, by the way, it's very, very va these normal values are very, very from hospital to hospital in books to books, uh, but uh, we can consider ranges. Uh, so this is all about the, uh, the normal values. So when there is loss in hemostasis, the organism tries to compensate it. If compensation succeeds, wellness happens. If compensation fails, disease happens. So deviation from the normal range is known as pathology. So, for instance, uh, in a state of disturbance hemostasis, for instance, hemostasis is at normal range, but sometimes there will be deviation. In that case, if uh, temperature is increased in our body, we can say hyperthermia. If temperature is increased in, uh, decreased in our body, we can say hypothermia. If partial carbon dioxide de increases in our body, we can say hypercapenia, and decreases, it, we can say hypocapenia. And uh, if pH increases in our blood or our body, we can say alkalosis. And uh, if pH decreases in our body, we can say acidosis. If partial oxygen is increased in our body, it is hyper hyperoxia. If partial oxygen decreases in our body, we can say hypoxia. So calcium increases in our body, we can say hypercalcemia. Uh, in blood, hypercalcemia. So if calcium decreases in blood, we can say hypocalcemia. So, if uh, glucose increases in the blood, so we can say hyperglycemia. The amount of glucose in the blood is, we can say, hypoglycemia. So, this is a sign of deviation. So, uh, this is summary. So, this is uh, things which is outside our body is external environment. Things in extracellular fluid environment is known as internal environment. In this case, uh, there is a uh, there is here a respiratory system, oxygen and carbon dioxide will be exchanged into circulatory system and uh, nutrient salt water by digestive, uh, by alimentary canal, it, there is communication to the circulatory system, so unwanted part is released here. In urinary system, unwanted substance waste products are removed here, but there is communication to the circulatory system and also cell, this is interstitial fluid between cells. So then there is communication between uh, interstitial fluid and uh, plasma uh, and blood cells, and there is also communication. So by this case, circulatory system will handle this thing is in all. So these all functions are working harmony. All systems are working harmony to make the living being alive. So this is all about the uh, uh, interaction part of physiology. Uh, in order to get the next videos, chapter 2, chapter 3, and the next chapters, don't forget to subscribe uh, this channel. So, have a nice time. Bye-bye.